Hello and welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner, Theory of Python, another Python tutorial video. This one covers functions, which frankly, I'm really excited about. Functions are a very important concept in computer programming. In fact, it's so important that it's the foundation for what we might call functional languages. Many languages uh, don't treat functions as first class citizens in the type system. Like you can create functions and stuff, but you can't really pass them around as values. Python is very different. In Python, a function is just another object. So let's go over what functions are and how they behave, okay? So functions are an object, and there's actually many different types of function types, right? We're not gonna really get into that right now and try to confuse you. Uh, they are callable. We'll talk about how to call functions in a minute, okay? And when you call them, you're gonna pass in some parameters. I'm just gonna call them params, okay? And then it's going to run some code. And then it's going to give you some kind of result. So this code, it could have what we call side effects. Okay. Um, so it may modify some of the other things that are in memory. All right. And then it returns the result at the end. Okay. All right. So there is a concept called a pure function. Okay, pure functions, they have no side effects. And the result depends only on the parameters. Even though Python functions aren't necessarily pure functions, you can write pure functions in Python. And when you can, and I encourage you to find excuses to do so, you should use pure functions. It makes your life as a programmer so much easier. Uh, it makes the code so much more portable. So many good things happen because of using pure functions. Okay, so how do we use functions? Well, we have some expression that evaluates to a function. Then directly after that, we have a parenthesis. And then inside of here, we're gonna pass a parameter list. Okay. And that parameter list is basically just a list of expressions. It can be one expression or no expressions. You can have a comma at the end. You can have, if you have multiple expressions, they're separated by commas, right? So this is valuable, uh, allowed as well. There is actually something called keyword parameters that we're not going to cover yet. We'll cover that as we get into a more serious definition of functions, including dictionaries and sequences and stuff like that. But I just wanted to get a really early introduction to functions. We're not gonna talk about the keyword parameters yet. Uh, let me give an example. Suppose that we had a function called, we had the variable two, and that equals some function. Okay, and then the nice thing about this function is it doesn't take any parameters and it returns the number two, right? So if we type two and we call that, that's going to give you back two, okay? So we call this with no parameters, right? And we could also have another function called double equals some function to find somehow, right? When we call double, we pass in a single parameter. Let's say we pass in the parameter seven and it doubles that, so it'll pass back 14. Okay, that's kind of how you call and use a function. How do we create new functions? This is where it gets really interesting. So in Python, when you create new functions, you use the def statement, okay? I'm not gonna cover the full def statement here, I'm just gonna cover a subset, stuff to get you started programming. So you first start with def, D-E-F, okay? Def is a keyword, you cannot create a variable called def. You cannot name a function def, anything like that. Next, we're gonna have some identifier, just like a variable name, it can start with underscore A through B, capital lowercase, and it can have numbers inside of it as well, okay? Then we're gonna have a parenthesis, okay? And then inside of here, we're going to have a list of identifiers. These will be the parameter names, okay? And then we're gonna end with a colon, okay? And the list is separated by commas, of course, right? So you can have like a comma b, you can have no identifiers at all, right? So you can just have a function that has no parameters, that's fine, okay? Next, we have to either have a one-liner, so we're gonna have a series of statements separated by semicolons, or we're going to indent, this is the first time that we've done this, and you're gonna indent by four spaces, 
Don't ask me why, just do this. You can use other indentations in Python, but I encourage you to only use four spaces for this, okay? And then that's this, either these statements, or if you've indented the lines that follow that are indented to that, that's the function body, okay? That's the code that gets run when we do the function. And inside the function body, we can have a return statement. So the return statement can be as simple as just the word return by itself, in which case the return value will be none, okay? Or you can have return with a single expression, and that will be whatever that expression evaluates to. Okay, you could also have multiple expressions. We'll cover that when we cover tuples and sequences. Okay, what that means. Okay, well, let's define some, oh wait, about this list of identifiers, the parameters. So the parameters, the parameter spec is actually quite a bit more complicated than I represented. It could just be a name, an identifier. You could have name equals some value this, will, this, this is a default value that will get set if nothing else is specified, right? It could be a name colon the type that is expected, and you can combine those two together. Name colon type equals a value. Some examples. So you could just have the parameter A. You could say A is equal to 5. So if the user doesn't specify the A parameter, then it's set to 5. You could say A is a float Okay, A is a float, or should be a float, and it's equal to 1.0 if it's not specified. Those are all valid parameters that could be in the list of parameters up here. Okay, let's talk about what is really going on inside of Python when you call a function. Okay, so as an example, I'm going to have a simple function over here. This is going to be the function um, def double. And it's going to take a parameter, a, and we're just gonna, you have to specify it, there's no default value, and it's going to return a times two, okay? Now, over here in my code, when I say double six, okay, step one is it matches the parameters. Well, actually, it figured out what double was. When you define a function like this, it's assigning the function to the variable double. Okay, so double is just a variable. So first it matches the parameters. In this case, we have one parameter and it expects one parameter, okay? Next, it's going to create a new namespace. Okay, and I'm gonna represent that with the sticky note here. Okay, and in this new namespace, it's gonna say, look, the parameter name is A, the value is six. So it's gonna create a equals six, okay? Then step three, it's going to execute the function body. Okay, until it hits a return statement. And then four, um, or it falls off runs out of code. And then four, it's going to return the result, which is going to be none if you don't return anything. Okay, so we're gonna execute the function body. So the first line of the function body is a statement and the statement says return and there's an expression here. So let's look at that expression. So it says look up A, so we go over here to our local scope, right, not the global scope, with local scope first, we see that there is an A we see that its value is six, so we say that's six times two is 12, and so it's going to return 12. And so the double six at the end is going to evaluate to 12, okay? That's what's going on. So you have to get this concept in your head that when you're calling a function, you're creating a new namespace. This is going to be called the local scope, okay? And it overrides the global scope. So let me give you an example of what I mean by that. Let's go ahead and throw away that scope because we're not calling it anymore. Let's say your code, we're gonna run some statements. So the first statement we're gonna run is we're gonna say a is equal to five. The next statement we're gonna run, we're gonna say def double a colon return a times two, okay? And then we're going to call double 
would say seven this time. Okay. Now this statement, this A could refer to the local scope for the invocation of this function. Okay. It could also refer to the global scope when you defined A outside of the function. Okay. In this case, well, for all function cases, it's going to first look at the local scope, the local namespace. And then if it can't find it there, then it'll go to the global scope. Okay. So in this case, this will evaluate to 14. If we change double, so we say def double, let's say B, and we're going to say return A times 2, then when we call double, let's say 10, what's it going to return? Well, it's going to invoke this statement in the local namespace with B set to 10, right? But in this case, we're looking at A, not B. So it looks in the local namespace, it doesn't see an A. So then it goes to the global namespace, it sees A is five. So it is going to return five times two, which is 10. That's the result of that thing, okay? This concept of namespaces is probably extremely confusing for people, especially new programmers. So I encourage you to think about this and to ask questions about it and to experiment with it until you understand it, okay? Now there's uh, an error that you're going to run into when you define a function. Let me give you an example of what will happen to spawn this error. Let's say you have a is equal to zero, and I'm going to define a function that increments a. Okay, and the body of that function, we're going to do dot, dot, dot is what it's going to say. We're going to end it four spaces, and we're going to say a is equal to a plus one. Okay, now, I could have written a plus equals to one. This is another kind of a sign statement where we have the operator. And this just means a equals a plus one, okay? So let's look at what happens when this statement is executed. This is the assign statement. The first thing it's gonna do is look up the value a, add one to it, and then it's gonna take that value, whatever a was, and store that in a, okay? Now, if you were to run this code, what will happen? And I encourage you to run this code and tell me in the comments below what happened, okay? Now I'm gonna tell you why it happened, okay? When this function was defined, it analyzed the statements and it saw that, oh look, you're assigning to the value, the, the variable a. So it reserved a spot for a. However, at the time of this access for a, you have not yet assigned to it, okay? Now you thought you were accessing the global a. If you wanted that to be the global a, then you'd have to run this statement first. So you'd say def, inc a and then dot 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 four spaces you would say global a and this statement here says that in this function body in this local scope a is not the local a but it is the global a okay and then we'll do a equals a plus one okay and so in this case when you call inc a it's going to do what you think since it returns none, there's no response. And then if we type in A here, it should show you one. And if you call inc A again and look at A again, it should be two, okay? So that's what the global statement does. A very important statement. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you start experimenting with writing your own functions. Come up with ideas for new functions you can write. If you have ideas for homework problems, go ahead and put them in the comments. If you have a function that you've run, you don't understand why it's not working, you can put it in the comments, I'll look at it, and in five seconds, I'll basically figure out why it's not working. So I hope you enjoy this. This is when programming really starts to take off. This is really the beginning of your computer science and your computer engineering, or your program, your program software engineering uh, career. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. This video is part of a series on the theory of Python. You can click on the left to see the playlist and on the right to support my channel. Thank you very much for your time.